Hello everybody, British Bob here, how do you do? Today the PJ Masks are getting all powered up with the release of these latest toys. So let's start first by looking at their Mission Control HQ playset, which comes with a lights and sound control panel, and an exclusive green outfit for Romeo. Although I wouldn't be very happy if my hairdresser did that to my hair. Now I know what you're thinking, the headquarters might look compact, but it opens up into three levels of fun. I mean, would you just look at that? And it also comes with three new features. And what better way to unwind after school than shooting off some feathers, spinning down a pole, or capturing some villains? And it's not just the headquarters which gets a makeover. Just take a look at these twin packs. Catboy gets his cat stripes, and Gecko and Owlet get their super shields. Plus you get one of each of the Wolfie kids. And of course, in true British Bob style, I'm going to be putting these toys through their paces. And what better way than letting the PJ Masks loose with their newfound superpowers. So join me as I take the PJ Masks on another fun-filled adventure. Now don't change the channel just yet. This isn't boot camp. But what we're looking through here are a pair of night vision goggles. The question is, who's behind them? Ah, the fact I can see Robot leaves me to believe it's Romeo and one of his inventions. And sure enough, here we have Romeo's lab, and Romeo himself on the lookout platform. But what interest does he have with the moon, I wonder? Come on, follow me and let's see if we can find any clues. Hmm, okay, but Night Ninja and the Ninja Linos also appear to be looking up at the moon. Just what is going on out here in the woods today? It's definitely not a teddy bear's picnic. And if that's not coincidental enough, we also have all three of the Wolfie kids looking up at the sky too. I'm just racking my brains to think what it is they could all be doing. Ah, of course, the pennies finally dropped. Since Luna Girls formed her Luna Wand, She's been keeping the PJ Masks busy and all to herself up in space. This explains everything. So here we find the rest of the nighttime villains back on Earth, waiting for the PJ Masks to return. So what's left for them to do except for watching and waiting patiently for their moment to come? I don't think I've ever seen it so quiet around here. And don't think it's just the villains that are having a hard time with all of this. Spare a moment's thought for the poor old sidekicks. Like Robot here, for example. He's getting ready to turn off his circuits and shut down. Well, that's enough of the backstory down here on Earth. Right, let me just find the right channel. Where was I? Ah, yes. The vibe just couldn't be any more different up here in space. It's just been like one big MTV music video, featuring the PJ Masks and their ultimate space nemesis. Luna Girl. And the fact she's formed her Luna Wand hasn't given the PJ Masks a moment's rest. But on the flip side, they've become real space adventurers, and Gecko's become an absolute master of controlling the HQ rocket ship. You could say he's well and truly over his fear of travelling amongst the stars now. And speaking of stars, those poor nighttime villains are well and truly out of a job. If only the PJ Masks really knew how much the villains needed them. But fret not boys and girls, although Luna Girl's been taking centre stage the last few weeks, news is just in there, Luna Wand has been destroyed, so now that she's been powered down, she's no longer got a hold over the moon. And with that good news, the PJ Masks are now on their way back to Earth, so let's go straight up to space and join them as they start their descent. And by my calculations, they should be arriving any second now. And here they are, right on cue, literally seconds away. And not a moment too soon either, as the Wolfie kids look as though they've just given up all hope. If only they knew Gecko was just on the horizon. Whoa, he's travelling fast! And he's only just missed the top of the Wolfie kids' bus! My word, that was close! Let's see it again in slow motion from a side view! I didn't even think I could get a pencil within that gap! Insane flying skills! And it doesn't look as though Gecko's got any intention of slowing down either! Whoa, he's now going back! Whoa! The Night Ninja can't believe what he's just seen! My word, Gecko, you're a little rapscallion! Not exactly very subtle as all this showboating is leading the nighttime villain straight to you! Just what are you thinking? 
Well, it's too late to worry about that now as we join Gecko perfectly landing the Rocket HQ ship at the landing site. The question is, which villain's going to get there first? Well, that's what you call a grand entrance. And why you should always look at the road when you're driving. Come on, let's go and quickly see if the nighttime villains are okay. So far, so good. Yes, just a case of bruised egos. So with them now outside, an attack on the headquarters must be imminent. The question is, why did Gecko lead them straight here? There's only one way to find out. Let's head inside. Oh, I wasn't expecting them to be so calm. They obviously know something we don't. And I think we're just about to find out what that is. Ah, they've upgraded to the Mission Control HQ. Although I think the villains actually think they've downgraded. I mean, yes, it does look a little bit smaller than the old one in its current state. But what it lacks in size, it certainly makes up for in firepower. Boys and girls, say hello to Owlette's little friend, the Feather Shooter. Take it away, Owlette. Now, who's going to be first? Ah, Rip. Now, don't worry, boys and girls, it's perfectly harmless. It's just going to knock a little bit of wind out of her sails. And the same goes for the other two wolfy kids as well. Ooh, nice shot. Whoa, hey! Whoa, that feather was a little bit more harmful than I thought. And it looks though Owlette's still got one more trick left up her sleeve. The question is, what is it? The Super Feather Shield. Well played. And she's just knocked all three of the Wolfie kids over like pins in a bowling alley. Now the question is, do they still feel like invading the headquarters? No, yeah, I thought not. But wait, what's this? The Feather Shooter was just the start of it all. And it looks like it's Romeo who's next to discover the features the new headquarters has in store. Starting first with Mission Control on the top floor. Control Center and Heavy Arsenal on the middle. And a powered up Gecko waiting for him at the bottom. If I was Romeo, I'd be thinking about running for the hills right now. No, but in a surprise twist, Romeo doesn't seem phased by this and is making a dash for the center console. And better late than never, it looks though Night Ninja's now making his approach to the headquarters. And something tells me he's come to have a word with Gecko about that circus stunt flyby. Oh, but wait, is Owlette going to take him out with another aerial attack? No, she's going to let Gecko try out his new superpowers and watch it all happen from the safety of her TV screen. Okay, places everyone, we have Night Ninja versus Gecko in a head to head match. The question is who's going to come out on top? Looking at Gecko's face, he looks very confident here. And rightfully so, as he dispatches with those sticky splat balls with great ease. Beautiful. And before I've even had a chance to catch my own breath, it appears Catboy's turned up in his cat car. Where did he get to? Oh, no time for that now, as it's his turn to try out his new superpower. The Super Cat Stripes. And just look how he's wrapped Night Ninja up like a little baby. That's it. Off you hop, my little amigo. So this is it. The grand finale. It's just Romeo left in the headquarters as Gecko disappears with his camouflage. And Catboy backs Romeo into a corner using his super cat stripes. Romeo doesn't realize it yet, but he's a guinea pig for the final feature of their new headquarters. The electric cage. But wait a minute, who's this? It can't be. It is, it's Robot. And he's headed straight at high speed for the headquarters. With a direct hit on Romeo's cage. Knocking poor Gecko off the wall and freeing Romeo in the process. It looks like Romeo's going to live to fight and be dead. What a mess. But something tells me they've forgotten how short my studio desk is. Yep. Toys. Gets them every time. 
Well, boys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed unboxing these toys and going on an adventure with me today. Please remember to comment and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. Toodle pip! <laughs>